all of you say hi to Corythosaurus casuarius, the helmet lizard. What if he becomes a little smaller? And then, slowly and slowly, he became into this. This is Cosuvery, a flightless bird. Birds are called as glorified reptiles. It's interesting, isn't it, how birds have directly evolved from dinosaurs? They look so similar, yet they look so different. Let's use this video to learn more about birds. How did we know birds came from dinosaurs? It's because of a very important piece of fossil evidence called as the Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx was the in-between organism between a reptile and a bird. But how did we know that birds came from reptiles? It's because of a very important piece of fossil evidence called as the Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is the in-between organism of a reptile and a bird because it had features from the reptiles as well as the birds. This is what it might have looked like. It was quite a small bird, just 15 centimeters in height. Now, the characteristic feature of birds is the presence of feathers and that most of them can fly. Their forelimbs have been modified into wings, except for few birds like ostrich, the penguin, kiwi and kosovari. These are the flightless birds. The birds don't have their jaws like other organisms before them. The jaws have been modified into beaks. They have different types of beaks based upon what they eat and how they eat. But the most important thing is that they do not have any teeth. How do they deal with it? We'll see it a little later. Their forelimbs have been modified for flight. We have already seen that. But if you look at their hind limb, it's quite interesting. Because they have remnants of their ancestor, the reptile. Because the hind limbs have scales. Also, they can have two digits, three digits or four digits in their hind limbs. And they have huge nails like this. So, it could be in the form of claws or talons. Talons are usually used to describe the nails of birds of prey. Like eagle, hawk, etc. You might have seen birds do this, right? This behavior is called as preening. Preening is nothing but cleaning and straightening its feathers and it's also oiling the feather. Now, how is it doing that? That's because birds have an oil gland that is present at the base of its tail. It's called as the uropegeal gland and it makes their feathers waterproof. But other than this gland, the skin has no glands and therefore it is very, very dry. Now the most important question, what helps the bird to fly? Here is the cross section of bird bones. The left one belongs to an ostrich and the right one belongs to a swan. This one belongs to a vulture. So the main difference between these three birds is that ostrich cannot fly. Uh, the swan cannot fly exactly but it still uh, is able to make short flight. Whereas vulture can extensively fly. Can you see the difference in how the bone is made up? So, the endoskeleton of uh, birds are bony, meaning they are fully ossified and they have bone cells. And the long bones of birds are hollow, uh, therefore called as pneumatic bones. They are filled with uh, air spaces. They don't have any marrow. Look at how the flightless bird's bone is filled with marrow. The bones have these uh, crisscross structures inside them called as struts. Uh, they are supporting structures of these bones. The next feature which allows the bird to fly is their respiratory system. Birds have exceptionally effective respiratory system uh, because it provides them oxygen even while they are flying at great heights. The respiration is pulmonary, meaning it is through lungs. They also have these additional structures called as air sacs that help in the breathing process. So during flight, the bird must have continuous supply of oxygen. And to ensure that it gets a proper air supply, it uses a unidirectional flow of air. But in order to initiate the breathing process, 
there should be negative pressure inside the lungs that's how it happens in mammals and humans right so birds use a similar technique like how we use in humans um they use their chest muscles and abdominal muscles to um manipulate the lungs as well as the air sacs so that a negative pressure is created within these structures and it helps them to draw the air into their body from the atmosphere this is the dorsal view of lungs and air sacs this is how the pathway of the lungs look like so this is the trachea trachea leads to the primary bronchus primary bronchus does not connect to the lungs like in case of humans it actually connects to an air sac that is at the back side of the body so posterior air sac the posterior air sac then connects to the secondary bronchi which then supplies into the parabronchus parabronchus or air channels are the actual lungs of birds we have the anterior air sacs as well these are towards the uh, front side of the lungs and this is a closer uh, look at parabronchus we can see that uh, there are small channels uh, these are air channels because air is going to flow through them but at the same time they are filled with capillaries so they have blood channels as well so exchange of gases happen within the parabronchus between the air channels and the blood channels now let's understand how air flow happens in the bird lung we are already familiar with the structure so the bird first inhales and it takes in a pocket of air so this air reaches the posterior air sac now mind you this is breath 1 and it's the first inhalation of that breath so to understand how the flow works let's consider a pocket of air and how that particular amount is circulating through the respiratory system of the bird okay now it's still breath 1 but there is exhalation happening now before the breath that we considered there would have been some air inside the bird's lungs right now that air is exhaling out this is still breath 1 and it is the first exhalation the pocket of air that was in the posterior air sac now enters the parabronchus for exchange of gases now we move on to second breath so the bird is inhaling for the second time taking in a new pocket of air we know it is going to go to the posterior air sac but the pocket of air that we took in in the previous breath is now moving to the anterior air sac from the lungs and finally we come to the exhalation part of the second breath it's only now that the pocket of air that we were considering in the first breath is moving out of the bird lungs so we can see that a single breath remains in the system for two breathing cycles to complement this excellent respiratory system the bird also has a very good circulatory system the heart is completely four chambered there is proper separation between the upper and the lower chambers so there are two atria and two ventricles there is complete separation of oxygenated as well as the deoxygenated blood this is how the circulation happens oxygenated blood enters the heart at a left atrium from the lungs at the same time deoxygenated blood enters into the right atrium from the body tissues both these make their way to the respective ventricular chambers then uh, from the left side of the heart uh, the blood is pumped into the body system whereas from the right side of the heart that is the right ventricle the blood enters into the lungs for oxygenation because the blood goes through the heart twice it is called as a complete double circulation the metabolism of birds is really high and it requires a lot of oxygen especially when it is in flight in the animal kingdom the birds have the highest amount of hemoglobin per mm cube of blood they are also warm blooded organisms meaning they are able to maintain a constant temperature in the body now let's look at the digestive system unlike mammals birds do not have teeth right so their digestive system are made to compensate for the lack of teeth 
it is made to process meals very fast and in an effective manner so let's see how it happens the food enters the uh, bird's body through the mouth and then it reaches the esophagus which is the food pipe from the food pipe uh, through peristalsis it enters a pouch which is called as the crop you notice that the birds eat really dry uh, food and it eats really quickly it can't chew it so crop is a storage um, chamber which moistens the food the longer it stays the more moist it becomes and it becomes easier for the uh, birds to digest them later from the crop then it enters the first part of the stomach which is called as proventriculus this is the digestive stomach meaning it's able to secrete enzymes which digest the food particle the second part of the stomach is called as gizzard crocodiles also have gizzards just like birds uh, this particular trait is evidence of the close evolutionary relationship between birds and reptiles gizzard is a muscular pouch and they have these tiny keratinous teeth like structures inside and they contract and relax and in that process uh, there is mechanical breakdown of food vitamins are absorbed within the small gut with the help of bile which comes from the liver and other digestive enzymes water is absorbed in the large gut the waste is expelled um, in the cloaca which is a multi purpose opening towards the end of the digestive canal um, the birds use cloaca for reproductive purpose urinary purpose as well as for digestive purposes the ability to digest food and absorb the nutrients within a very short period of time is very critical for bird survival in birds the sexes are separate birds are very unique because they have complex behaviors uh, with respect to mating and reproduction which is usually called as courtship courtship rituals are amazing display of behaviors to attract a mate these rituals can include a lot of things um, there could be visual displays so we all have seen peacock dancing right this is another example so this species is called as birds of paradise here the male bird is doing a sort of a dance in front of the female to see if the female would mate with him birds can also have vocalization as part of the courtship ritual this is a nightingale a nightingale is very popular for its mating call which goes something like this courtship can also have other unique behaviors in the birds of paradise there is another species where the male bird builds a nest and decorates the nest this is to attract a mate the female bird likes the nest then she would mate with the male bird the fertilization is internal for birds and it happens via cloaca male birds lack a penis or any other copulatory structures most of the birds at least there are few birds which do possess a penis one of such exception is duck this is the copulatory structure of a duck birds are oviparous and they have hard shelled eggs the eggs are amniotic as well we have already discussed about amniotic eggs in a previous video birds show extensive parental care uh they incubate and they guard the eggs in the process of incubation they give a certain temperature so that uh it helps the chicks to hatch out of the shell when the chicks break open the shell and come out it's called hatching and because they have amniotic eggs it allows the embryo to grow fully before they come out of the egg therefore birth show direct development their parental care extends beyond the incubation period they feed the baby they teach the baby to um either fly or swim depending upon what species they are and they are with the birds until the chicks are ready to fly on their own 